What's up, everybody? It's Tom here with Game, and I'm here with Dan Hay, the creative director of Ubisoft Montreal. How are you doing today, sir? Good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. You are doing the BAFTA Games Lecture tomorrow. How are you feeling? Good. A uh, little tired. Jet lag is kicking my butt right now, but other than that, I'm good. The keynote's called uh, Rooted in Reality. Can you just give us a quick overview? I just think that um, what I wanted to be able to do with the speech was, and the presentation was to be able to tell people, you know, sometimes we overcomplicate our ideas. Sometimes when we're thinking about how to be creative, the best place to look is what's beside you or what's around you. And I think that if you can data mine the world, it's got an amazing opportunity for you to be able to look at things and go, I can build my creative off of that or off of that, and it doesn't need to be super complex. Has there been a part of your work, like one aspect that really uh, inspired the speech? I think so. Maybe it's not work, but it's like life. It's just that um, I think that when I think about, you know, being a creative and being in a creative industry, um, you know, sometimes I get asked, you know, what do you do? You make games. What does it mean? You play games all day. And that question infuriates me because I hear it all the time. Uh, if you're working in a creative industry, it's sometimes difficult to get people to understand what it is that you do and how to work with creatives and what, what that means. And, and even the word creative, you know, when I was looking online at images that say that, what I would see is these splashes of color or somebody who'd scribbled something on a, on a wall and that was supposed to represent creativity. And, and I think the point that I'm making in this is that, yes, that is creative, but there's a better way to maybe apply a process to it, to understand how to work with creative people or how to be creative yourself and unlock something that you don't even know that you already have. Amazing, yeah, I completely understand the, the difficulty of trying to explain working in the games industry. It's a tricky one. Yeah. Um, you work on Far Cry 5. Does Far, say Far Cry 5, is that inspired by the same things as, say, you guys made Child of Light, something a smaller game. Would they be inspired by the same kind of thing? I think I, I, it's hard to know exactly the thing that would inspire each thing. But what I think is interesting is that uh, well, what's interesting about Yubi is that it's got a lot of talented people. And I think that um, we were kind of trained and have the ability to look at the real world and take from it and be able to say, you know, something that somebody might walk past and not find interesting. Say, there's a story there. There's an opportunity there. There's a game system there. And I think if, if we have that opportunity or if we have that training or we have that insight, being able to share that with young creators who maybe don't know how to, how to untap that potential or basically figure out a way to be able to explain what it is that they have in their head and then give a window into what's actually going on behind the scenes. How hard is it to work with huge teams that are located all over the world? How hard is it to work with some of the different things that we're doing in the tech and just sort of um, pull back the curtain and show people what it's really like so that it's not so, um, so that people can look at it and maybe it's more attainable. What's the feeling like of the potential of inspiring so many brand new game developers? It's super cool. I think that um, a lot of the times as creators, you get locked in your head, right? You end up writing something, you end up having an idea and you think it's gold and you get fixated on it. And the truth is the best thing you can do is share it and get feedback and hear about it and iterate it and kind of trim the fat off it or look at it and, and move the parts around and kind of discover it. And if you have the ability to take that and give it to somebody and they can make it better, it's amazing. This is really, really exciting, the amount of untapped potential out there. How do the creative processes uh, differ throughout Ubisoft? You work at Montreal, but obviously Ubisoft, you're everywhere. Right. Do you know how you have many insight into the rest of the teams? We do. And what's really interesting, I think, when people think about creative and leveraging creative, talent is that, and, and, and I talk about this a bit, is that one size doesn't fit all. I think one of the mistakes that you can make when you come into a creative environment is to go, well, this is what worked over here, so I'll apply it here, and it will work again. And the point that I would say to folks is, when you come into a place and you're thinking about making something, the very first thing that you should do is look at the culture that's there. Look at the people that you have, and look at what they're already making. Look at what they already know. Because leveraging that talent and leveraging what they already have is just a great investment to make and proves the fact that one size doesn't fit all. Welcome to Strange City! Population, red and dead! dead. You have worked in the games industry now for a few years. You've worked at Ubisoft since Far Cry 3, but you previously worked in commercials and film. Yep. Do the same creative processes and stuff you'll be talking about tomorrow, do you, can they be applied to the film and commercial world? Yes and no. I think that when you're working in commercials, there's a really, really quick turnaround. And so when you're kind of 
when you have to make decisions and when you have to iterate really, really fast, there's not a lot of time for uh, questions about it. There's not a lot of time for, well, I really feel like this. You gotta go fast, you gotta get it done. And I think that that's good from the standpoint is that it teaches you how to edit and how to tune really well. Films is a little different and I only worked in films for a short while, but in that time, that definitely felt like games. And then moving to games, I think what's been interesting is to watch the progression. Watch what happens when, over the course of the years, the parity between film and games, it's almost where it needs to be from the standpoint of the stories that you want to tell in games can be as rich and inviting and unique as the stories that are in movies. So I think there's definitely different elements that you can leverage, but I think that they are different ecosystems, and I think that our reflexes and the way that we choose to author the stuff is different. Do you think the speech you're about to give tomorrow could be the same speech you would give in five years' time or five years prior, or do you think you've learned that at this point in your career is the right time to give that speech? That's a good question. I, I hope it's not the same speech. I hope that it changes all the time. I hope that it's not me giving it. What would be really cool to, is, to, is to give the presentation and then inspire somebody else to be able to have their ideas and maybe give them just a little hint as to not make the mistakes that I've made or that could tune their process a little easier so that in five years or in three years or in two years, they're showing off their game, they're showing off their movie, they're showing it off and they're saying, and this, this thing has helped me just that little bit to actually get it done. Amazing, thank you for chatting to us. You've got Far Cry 5 coming out next year. One final question for you. How have you used this creative process to develop Far Cry 5 with the rest of the team? I think you know it's been, a, it's been a labor of love and trial and error. I think the number one thing that I would say is that a lot of times you're gonna get data back and different people will say, you know, try and get it right the first time. Don't iterate. And it's just statistically and mathematically impossible to get it right the first time. It just can't happen. Iterate, try it, you're gonna get it wrong, fail. Right? And it's okay to fail because what it does is it forges your idea and it creates that beautiful elixir of the vision that you have. And it's gonna make whatever you make that much more potent. Don't be afraid to fail. Amazing, thank you for chatting with us. Thank Thanks. you very much. Cheers. Far Cry 5 is out next year. Stay tuned to Game YouTube for so much more.